carbon dioxide concentration is projected to go up and up in the rest of this century, and that will certainly have continuing warming effects. It's really bad news indeed if we can't turn around annual emissions in the next 20 years, and then there may be pressure 20 years from now for panic measures, including geoengineering. But not thinking about engineering the climate is what is historically odd. The fact that we ask ourselves, is it time to think about engineering the climate, would throughout most of modern history have been a strange question, because through most of modern history and through most of the history of climate science, People have thought about that because people have thought about society and the climate as things which act upon each other and which interact in interesting ways. It's very interesting to, uh, to speculate as to whether we're going to, as it were, play God with the climate, whether we, be, be, whether we control the climate. Uh, I think quite possibly we will. There's a lot we don't understand about what would happen to the global climate system if we were to engineer this cooling of the planet. I mean, certainly we can cool it, but it's not going to be uniform around the world, and it's going to have a lot of other knock-on consequences. There'll be changes in precipitation patterns. Uh, and how do you say to a country that's experiencing a big drought, for example, whether it was the geoengineering that did it or whether it was going to happen naturally? You have to try, because I don't see any other way to, to slow down the global warming rate uh, at this critical time. CO2 won't do it. So we, we have to look at whether we can use geoengineering methods because I, I don't see, see re really any other way. Shooting large amounts of uh, aerosol sulfate particles into the stratosphere like happens during a large volcanic eruption to try to mimic the effect of a volcanic eruption, which is a cooling influence on the climate. Um, it turns out that uh, even though the overall uh, temperature of the, the globe could perhaps be maintained, the two factors don't exactly offset each other. You would actually get large regional changes in the climate system, and you could end up warming the Arctic even faster. We could melt away Arctic sea ice even faster if we were to engage in one of these schemes. They just couldn't get away with it on a global scale, right? You, you're talking about having to, you know, every, pretty much anybody that works for an airline, anyone that does any sort of Earth observation from satellites, you know, so the whole of NASA, they'd all have to be in on this in order for it not to be detected by anybody other than these chosen few with the aluminium hats on. Um, and what frustrates me about it is it seems to be getting some traction on social media, but also if you take away the various chemicals that they say they're spraying and replace it with carbon dioxide, the term carbon dioxide, they're broadly right. So what they're seeing is a dramatic increase in, in aircraft, in commercial, mostly, aircraft. And that is having a profound effect on climate. That's the story. All of this other nonsense about mind control and subversive geoengineering is just a distraction. The worrying thing is that it's a metric for how little we are thinking about future climate and how reliant we are becoming on carbon.